doesn't sound good. Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Alan. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. Today's video is going to be a basic tune-up on a Honda commercial mower. This is a model HRC216. The guy that owns it has had it many, many years. He actually ordered it, special ordered it without the rear transmission, which I thought was kind of interesting. But it needed a lot of work, not a lot of regular maintenance on it. The wheels are pretty well locked up, and uh, I've already taken care of that. Uh, no need to show you that. Just lots of gentle persuasion and lubrication. So stick around to the end of the video. I actually uh, discovered something purely by accident. You might already know it, but hey, I learned something today. On the front side of the mower, I'm going to check the spark plug. And inside the spark plug cap looks good. This, uh, I can see, you can't see it, but there's no rust or anything on the inside. I'm using a uh, 21 millimeter magnetic socket. You can also use a regular 13 16 spark plug socket. Right, this is um this plug actually really doesn't look that bad. It's been running a little rich because I'm pretty sure that the air filter is probably clogged up. But since it's been a couple of years, I know we'll be replacing this plug. This is a NGK BPR5ES, and uh, I'll be replacing that with a new one. And I'm gonna check the spark gap on this. This is a point. 030 uh, feeler gauge and that actually feels a little bit loose here so I'm going to tap it on a piece of wood I know you can't see the piece of wood but just a piece of 2 by 4 and that gap feels a lot better now so just a little bit of drag not a lot of play and replace that spark plug. Start it by hand. Don't use a tool. And once it's seated almost to the bottom, tight, no more than a quarter of a turn, just to crush that crush washer. And that spark plug is good also like to add a little bit of, this is dielectric grease that um, lost its aerosol propellant. So I just use a, a shop Q-tip, a little bit on there, and then where I place this is just on the inside of the rubber boot. I don't try to get it into the electrode because this will prevent, if a spark plug gets a crack in the ceramic, this will help prevent it from the spark jumping and grounding out if there was a bad wire or something. So put that back on until you hear the positive click. There we go. Okay, on the right hand side of the mower, the easy thing we're going to check on first is to check the oil. On uh, on Hondas, you might assume that it's overfilled, but it's actually, uh, on Hondas, you don't screw the dipstick all the way in, and if this mower was newer, there would probably be a sticker on the side of it. On Hondas, you just push the dipstick in and as you can see this is just right at the full mark but the oil is really black so we'll be changing that out on the left hand side of the mower the air filter remove this screw and this hinges off at the back and yeah this is probably why that spark plug was so dark and dirty that's a lot of oil possibly the mower got turned over on the side Actually, there's a lot of debris buildup. It's a 10 millimeter uh, socket. I'm going to loosen these up on the air box back, and then there's one more right there, another 10 millimeter. That's a bolt. Just a regular bolt. And just wiggle the air box off. I'm going to remove this breather tube that's really kind of loose and it's actually cracked on the back side. I think that's okay though. And we can see that the carb is really kind of dirty. A lot of buildup there. 
I'll spray that down and clean that off. But as you can see, the air box is pretty dirty. Um, I'll be cleaning all that up with um, old gasoline. It's also a good time to take a look at the linkages and how they work. I'm operating the throttle cable. Choke. That's choke on. And that's choke off. And as you can see, it's really not activating much. on that spring right there. On Hondas there is a fuel tap. The fuel tap is off right now in the off position because it's perpendicular to the fuel line so I'm going to turn that on and uh, look for any leaks. There probably is not any but what I am going to do is drain out some fuel out of the carb and see what that looks like. There are two bolts on a Honda carb. There's the drain bowl right here this takes a 10 millimeter, so I'll be draining uh, whatever's out of here without hopefully loosening anything out. We'll get a good idea of what the fuel flow looks like as well as the condition of the fuel inside the bowl at this point. Fuel flow seems pretty good. There's a little bit of debris in there, but it certainly doesn't look like any water in the carb. So I'm going to turn the fuel tap off. I think the debris that's in this fuel bowl probably just came off the outside of the carburetor, but it's good fuel, no water. And I'm going to turn the fuel back on and go back and look for any leaks. All right, I think that's good. I just noticed, and I want, don't want to go any further, uh, sometimes on these older Hondas there are these little collars that actually fit uh, inside the airbox, so be mindful of one of those sticks. I just, I just noticed that. I want to make sure that goes back in before I reassemble this guy. So both of those collars in. So I wasn't too happy with the choke mechanism. It does actually work in close. It just either is a cable adjustment, but there is a lot of dust and dirt. So I'm gonna spray a little bit of WD-40 in here just to uh, hopefully lube things up a little bit. If it is just lube problem, this'll help some. A Little bit of cleanup, not much. Let that soak for a little while and I'll come back and check that movement. These Honda mowers are great machines. They have these little rubber boots on here to protect the cables. These are on their commercial mowers and uh, if you've seen any of my videos uh, you know I like to use a product uh, called TriFlow which is what the bicycle guys use. So I've lubricated those cables a little bit and operated them and I've also just hit this whole plastic mechanism with some WD-40 and that has freed up dramatically the operation uh, and now the choke uh, operates normally. Throttle uh, works well and then also all the way down choke you see will now activate the choke butterfly. So that now is working and lubricated so I think we'll be good to go there. With a toothbrush and some of the gasoline that drained out of there earlier I'm going to clean everything up so hopefully not too much will get sucked into the carburetor there. There's a big gasket. When that goes back on, you need to make sure that this cutouts there match. There's a hole right there, and that hole right there needs to match that. Just try to get as much of the big chunks of stuff off of here. I don't think I need to take the bowl off, but just in case. So now that the majority of the surfaces are clean, there's not as much uh, tension on these throttle and choke levers, so hopefully that'll keep that from fouling. And with a little bit of compressed air, 
I'm going to try to knock off the rest of everything. And with some uh, bad fuel already um, drained for some other mowers, I'll use that to clean up the air box. All right, so I've cleaned up all the air box. Uh, I hit it with an air compressor to dry it off. If you don't have an air compressor, obviously just use some rags, let it dry in the sun. But what I unfortunately noticed is, um, and it's really hard to see, well, you might be able to see it in this light. This air box is warped right here. So on the back side, there's this little channel that diverts the unburnt gases from the crankcase breather through here. And it's, it's right there. And it's, you might not be able to see it at this angle but certainly once you fit the gasket on there it's it's very clear that there's uh, no gap right here but as you turn the box around you can see there's a pretty significant gap back in the back so uh, what a lot of people don't realize is molded plastics acrylics that sort of thing they have a memory so I'm going to uh, rather than uh, because this air box is 50 bucks, and I realize it's a $50 a gamble that I'm doing here, but I'm going to take a heat gun on very, very low heat, and I'm going to heat this up very slowly, and then try to push this back to its original position, and, and then quench it all pretty fast in water. So hopefully that will get the air box to uh, get back to normal here. Maybe just a little more water. So hopefully I will burn up $50 here. Low heat. if there's any movement there yet. Yeah, there is a little bit. All right, let's see if we can quench this and cool it right down. So this is not perfect, but I will say I believe it is better than it was. Give it one more shot. This is not perfect, but it is a whale of a lot better than it was. So Hopefully this won't be sucking in too much dirt. I want to ensure that the gasket faces are clean, the gaskets themselves are clean. Remember, this little hole right here has to match up with that hole right there. I replaced the air channel diverter from the breather tube. That goes on next. And then Remember to make sure both of those spacers are on. And on that up there, start the nuts. Get the nuts set on the carburetor first. That's often times how air boxes like this get warped is you tighten down the other screws before the screws really matter on the um, carburetor. And unfortunately, this isn't the type of uh, gasket. That's a hard metal gasket with a rubberized surface. Sometimes, if you just have a fiber gasket there, you can just double up on that gasket and that takes care of a warped air box, but not on this particular style. And I don't know what the torque spec is, but I'm not tightening these down too much. Other screw goes back here. This is a rotary replacement. These are, you know, uh, good quality parts. 
but the original filter number for this particular commercial mower is a is a Honda one seven two one eight dash Z G nine dash M O O and this includes a pre filter. Again, these are good quality replacement parts. Rotary is. The pre-filter just carefully tucks right inside the air box. If this gets uh, overly saturated with dust and dirt and oil, you can actually clean these like you do a regular paper filter. And there are two hinges that tab right on right there. And then the cover screw. All right, to drain this oil, I'm on a drip pan here. To hopefully uh, contain any BP moments. And I'll let that drain for a few minutes. All right, according to the Honda owner's manual for this, this takes 0.69 U.S. quarts or 0.65 liters. Since there's going to be some residual oil in there, I'm going to start off with just half a liter. Uh, and I use just another uh, empty oil bottle and fill it up. Uh, I have a 20 ounce mark to help me and we're just going to start off with uh, about 16 ounces or a half a liter and see how that goes. This is really hard to see, I know, but it is exactly at the top of the hash marks on here. I'll try it again. Again, you don't screw this one in, just set it in. And you can see on the back side, hopefully, that it's just right at the top of those hash marks. So this is a perfect amount. And here is the moment of truth. Choke on. It's wanting to. Oh, did I turn the fuel on? That helps. It seems good. Well, just around 1750, somewhere around there. Bonus footage. So I needed to research replacing these wheels, which ultimately uh, he decided not to do. But as you can see, uh, the model number here, it's so old, there's a lot of dirt under there. Sort of, it doesn't matter what angle you go for it, or even a flashlight. Um, you're really, it's hard, it's difficult to see. But uh, here's a little discovery I made. Black light, lo and behold, boom, 
flash that on there and it comes out clear as a bell much clearer than with a plain old flashlight HRC 216 I hope this guy can get many more years of use out of this mower despite his lack of maintenance he ultimately decided not to buy the wheels and I don't blame him for that because they're crazy crazy expensive hope you got some tips and learned something for the video if you did please push the like button helps the channel out a whole lot and I really appreciate it oh and by the way those clattering sound at the beginning of the video, those were actually loose bolts on the blades. I took them off and sharpened them, and you can watch that video right here. I'm the Lawnmower Lady. Mo happy. Ah, uh, this compressor.